Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me here now, the 12th time, the 12th occasion, live on Avon Our Psychic Review and Moonstack TV. This is our show, Susanna Medium, and I'm your host, Susanna Herchek. I'm a psychic, a medium, an intuitive teacher, a coach, a teacher, and a therapist. And thank you very much for joining me here. Now, today, I'm going to talk to you about a very, very special topic, a very special conversation which came to me on Sunday. But if this is your first time, let me just tell you a little bit what was happening or what happened before this conversation came forward on Sunday. So I need to tell you, you probably watched my first show when I was talking to you about what is really inspiring me and what I'm really, really passionate about. And one area of my life is history. And I probably I did not tell you that one time, this lifetime, I was, I was behind the desk and I was teaching young people. I was teaching history, so history, historical research, historical conversations, lives, lives of people who lived in the past historically. They were always very, very close to me. So that is one little reference here. Now, the next one, moving forward a little bit, uh, about two years ago, and I'm going to be very specific here. Two years ago, I was giving a reading to somebody in a circle, and then there was a lady sitting next to me, and then she was saying that, oh, Susan, I feel that your reading is coming to me. And uh, we needed to know, we need to know that that lady who was sitting next to me, she also had this great interest in history, historical research, especially the Second World War. Uh, and then she was saying that her reading, this reading was going to or coming to her. And it happened to be that um, we had Anna Frank coming forward and giving information about her life and giving information to, to this sitter here. And at that time, I really could not say that was Anna Frank, but then between us, we agreed that we felt the sensation that that was that was that young lady who came forward. And the most important thing, apart from all the different details that she gave about her life, was that she said, that was two years ago, two, two and a half years ago, that when the time is right, she wants to come forward because she wants to teach us. Uh, so that was one thing. And um, about a year ago, I started feeling the sensation that I just happened to have on my left side, Anna Frank coming forward. And how I feel the sensation is that, and then it's just like with any, any, any other kind of mediumship, uh, spirit or consciousness is giving us some reference. So something is being put in my consciousness, in my understanding, and I could really feel and I could really relate to this person. And it was quite interesting that because the last, during the last year, during the last year really, she came forward and she showed me different things from her life in relation to the life I was experiencing or I am experiencing or the questions I might have or I had. So that was very, very interesting. And it was always just a sensation. And her energy was always on my left side coming forward. So that was quite interesting. And then quite, quite um, interestingly, uh, just before Christmas, uh, I was again in a different circle when another medium said, and she was saying, that, Susanna, are you aware that Anna Frank is getting ready to come forward to teach us? And it's nothing to do with me. It is just how she wants to come forward and how she wants to give us some, some, some uh, maybe memories, but we'll see what she's going to give us or some conversations. And I said to this lady, this, this very, very beautiful soul, a Scottish medium, that yes, I am aware that your frequency is getting getting closer and getting like get, gathering, gathering, and she's showing me little signs. So that was just created in the conversation. And I think about two or three weeks ago, I told you about how we received the first word, which was hope. You know, and how you feel the hope in your heart, the light of hope. This is what she she invited us to feel, and she gave us the reference of two eight weeks. And she was she was saying, well, "Let's focus on so when some, whatever we are experiencing, go back to your heart, feel that that hope, feel the light of hope in your heart." So that was happening. And then quite miraculously, this Sunday, that was two days ago, I sat down on Sunday morning and I said to myself, I just want to look into one kind of book, nothing to do with history, it's about something else. And then I did not even get to the bottom of the first page, the introduction, when I again felt her energy coming forward and I switched on my recording device. Uh, because it really felt like that now I'm getting getting some thoughts, not just one word, but a little bit more from her. And I was I I thought I was just really really amazing that well caught moment because um, we kept on talking for about forty minutes. 
So the last two days, I, I sat down and I transcribed the conversation, and I feel like it's quite important and quite interesting to give you a few few hints and a few points. So if you are interested, just stay tuned in. And you see, I've got a little book behind me. Um, up to this point, uh, the sensation was that, yes, I'm not going to read any, any historical stuff because I don't want to have anything coming to my, my real person consciousness and my awareness and my historical understanding of anything, anything what was said or discussed in her book or anybody who, uh, who has ever written anything about her. So, um, but then I think about two or three weeks ago, she said that, you know, read, read my diary, the diary of Anna Frank, because as you are going to read, I'm going to give you some more things. So she was saying that just get a notebook and when I'm reading, I'm going to take notes as well, but then I will see what is happening. So the conversation, what I, sh what I want to share with you today is really like soul to soul conversation, okay? So we know we live in 2021 and we are experiencing various things in our lives. But then from time to time during this conversation, she is reminding us that actually, yes, just it's, it's about soul conversation. You know what we are experiencing. It's nothing to do with what is around us, but then what we are as humans experiencing our lives okay so what i'm going to do because i was thinking yes shall i summarize or shall i just select a few points or shall i just rush through the whole conversation that's about 10 or so pages um, uh, material here it's like a little chapter here but i feel that it's quite important that we understand how she was wording and how she was giving us things so what i'm going to do i'm going to start reading i'm going to start giving you little bits as, as we were given, as I was given on Sunday, and we will see how far we get. And if I don't get to the very end of this conversation, then we will have it next time so we can easily finish it. But I feel that it was just quite remarkable how she has gathered her, her frequency and how she was giving various conversations on various topics. And to be honest, I'm, I was quite, uh, quite surprised uh, in a sense. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to read, sometimes I'm just going to read a little bit from my, from my notes here, uh, exactly the same way how I got the conversation. Now I need to tell you that um, uh, I'm, I'm using the spirit of consciousness when I do channeling work or channel, channeling material here was coming forward. I'm using certain or certain words are given, for instance, the sensation. So when I'm saying the sensation is this or a sensation is that, it means that it feels like so it's not that I'm seeing something or I'm hearing something or I'm getting uh, using my other senses, but then the sensation is so it feels like, okay? Now, in, the, in this conversation, she gave me a few points when, when she was actually giving me visual clues. So I will, I will share those ones as, as well with you. So it's, it's quite, quite, quite remarkable. So, you know, I'm just inviting you to sit back and then see what is going to resonate with you. Okay, so, so this conversation came on Sunday. <laughs> so uh, she says that the sensation is that she's asking, she's asking us to get ready, to get prepared. Now, at this point, I, actually, I really felt that, like, oh, this is quite straightforward and quite to the pro point, because she's saying that we need to get our things ready in a way that as they needed to get their things ready in their historical, in her historical time. But then she's saying that in her experience, in their experience, that was something what they needed to do very quickly. But then she's saying that for us, it is given, this experience is given, uh, uh, that uh, she's urging us that everything what we have in our lives, something which is, which is unfinished, like an unfinished business or situation or conversation with people or anything related to our lives, we need to attend that. So she's giving us this urgent notion. And she's also giving us the time frame of three or four months. And then she's saying that it's quite a long time, but then it should be enough and it should be sufficient to do the work what we need to do. She's also saying that during the forthcoming three and four months, that is the time, she's going to give us guidance on how to do things and how to help people because she understands that some people will find this time confusing, maybe totally confusing, that, that, that those people might feel that then they lose their minds, their frequencies. So she's saying that Everything is fine and everything will be fine. It is just helping each other when we feel that we have somebody in our community or in our lives. 
in our circle. Uh, we just need to listen. Maybe when people might say, I am lost, I'm feeling a little bit lost, you know? And then she's saying that none of the souls are being lost. Nobody will be lost. She's hoping that none of the souls on this earth plane will be lost during this time. But then she's just urging that when we fear that there is somebody in our community loses their frequency, loses, loses their hope, that we are there for each other and then we stand for each other. She's, all, she's also reminding us that last time when she spoke, when she mentioned the two and eight weeks period, she said that keep that hope that life of hope in your heart, that very quiet life of hope in your heart. Now, as you hear, you know, I'm reading the, the, the verse here, and this is exactly what I was given. So when I put my recording material, my recording device on, this is how everything is coming forward. So the sensation is that the hope, going back to the hope, the sensation is that the hope is not that what we what what is happening in our physical environment, in our three-dimensional environment, but that that hope you attach to your higher consciousness, the highest of the highest. So that is the hope. So knowing that hope, that you are being guided and you are on the right path. She's saying that when we say the right path, knowing that everybody is on the right path, and then here she emphasized that was the sensation of everybody is on the right path. Even if you feel that you are not on the right path, and then even if you feel that you are not going, you don't know where you are going, you know, when you feel that you don't know, when you don't know your hope in your heart, then she's just reminding that everybody is on the right path, okay? And then she's giving the sensation that all souls are doing the best, that nobody could be doing more or less but everybody is just doing the perfect amount of energy and frequency or attention of what everybody can do. She's giving us this massive amount of encouragement, this energy that everybody is doing very well given the circumstances. And I need to give you, when I was feeling this massive amount of encouragement, it was really being, it, I really felt in my heart that it's like really, really giving us that, that you know, things are moving forward and then just keep your hope. You know, this is what she was showing me here. And then she was also showing me that, you know, that was a sensation that she's really enjoying this experience, that she can see people experiencing their life, like people life earth, on, on the earth plane and that everybody's doing their best. Now, Moving forward, she was saying that she wants to be the teacher for everybody, not just for a certain group of people, uh, but that she wants to be the teacher for everybody. And that was a point when she gave me a moment, when she gave me a, a visual, visual clue, because she gave me this mother hand stretching her wings over the globe, so that really embracing everybody all over the world, you know. Now she's saying that she's hearing the voices and the cries of people from all over the world. Uh, and then from the different countries or continents. Uh, and then I felt that this was the point when she started, when she wanted to move on to conversations about the earth and earth plane. And then she's saying that when she is reassuring people that she's going to get to everybody, even if she cannot help right now everybody, but she's working on one phase and then moving on to the next one and then the next one. And then her message is just, just reminding everybody that be patient, you know, be patient. And then she's saying that it is nothing to do with our physical environment or current situation, but then that we need to find that patience, that whatever we are asking, that when we need it, we will receive it. You know, this is what she was saying. And it's always, it's always coming from the higher consciousness. Now, there is one point, you know, that from time to time, the conversation, then you really feel the, the, the character of the person. So it's not just what she's bringing forward, but then the, the, the sense of humor and the character. And then this, this is what happened as we move forward, as we, as we continue. Then, because she was saying that she's creating a team, helping people and helping souls from the consciousness from where she is. She's asking and she's saying it to us that she has put up an advertisement, an advertisement, you know, she put out an advertisement, uh, uh, and this is what she was showing me, that she has put, up, put this one out in that consciousness and on that level where she is, uh, to ask other souls from that realm to come forward and help her because she says that the task is great and the task is big and she wants to be at the front line of helping the souls on the earth to manage their tasks. 
and then the energy says, which means that the consciousness, the consciousness says that the time is coming, that we need to be strong, and then she wants to be there, and then she's just reassuring everybody that everybody has the strength, even if you don't feel that right now. Uh, then she says that she cannot see anybody, and then the, the words were coming, that I can see nobody who could not be strong enough to manage what he or she needs to manage. She says that some souls will choose to move on and their places are being prepared in the higher realms. But then she said that new souls are being born. And she's also she was also mentioning that she was very willing, that she's very willing to work with the new souls who are coming forward as if giving them a chair before they would land on this earth plane or before they would arrive here. Now she again mentions or just brings it forward that is that fact actually quite quite important and quite quite a strong point for her that she wants to educate us okay and then she says that we need to be selective of how we are educating ourselves and what we are educating ourselves with so she's saying that there are a lot of confusion and then she was talking at this point she was talking about the frequencies of confusion and she was saying the image she gave me that when, when humanity, when people, ourselves, when we create the frequencies of confusion, that frequencies are above Mother Earth. And then from the higher realm, how she's creating her team, they want to take those confusions away so that those frequencies are not hovering around us and not going to come back or, or reach Mother Earth. Yeah? So this is, what she was, uh, this, this is what she was showing here. And... Um, uh, in the next, next little chapter, she was talking about Mother Earth and meaning that that um, from the higher consciousness, they have received the request of Mother Earth. And Mother Earth was saying that she has been very, very patient to, to gather all the frequencies of what humanity has created. But now it is the time that Mother Earth has, Mother Earth has asked for um, support from the higher consciousness. Um, so that's, that was quite quite interesting here as well. Uh, what, one of the key points is not that just that that she wants to educate us uh, humans who live right now, but then she she wants to focus on uh, how we educate our children in schools. So that was quite a chunk, and probably I'm just going to leave that conversation. So I'm just going to put it to the side because it's quite a big conversation. And it was quite interesting that after this point, about 10 minutes into the conversation, then she started talking about my personal work. So that was quite interesting to, to, to have that side talk as well, or side conversation. Now, <clears throat> at this point, it, I think it's quite important. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> at this point, she was giving us a white candle, <clears throat> a white candle, uh, giving to, to everybody, to the whole uh, humanity. And then um, uh, the, a white candle for every single human. And then she says that if you don't hold your candle, make sure that you have one and you light your candle. And then she's also showing me a time, that she was showing me a time when everybody lights their candle at the same time. And uh, it feels like she's making a reference to the to a whole worldwide meditation hour when everybody lights their candle. She says that uh, she recognizes that it is quite funny from her point of view that uh, uh, one hour is happening, always happening at a different time throughout the, the world, the certain parts of the of the, co the different continents. And then she said it should not be our excuse of not knowing what time it is. We just need to light, we just need to keep the light going, and we need to light the candles. Even if, she says, that by the time it gets to the other side of the world and it all gets back to you, or it feels that it is coming back to you, to you on the following days, but then she said, what we need to do, we need to light the candle. And then she's uh, likening it to a Mexican, Mexican wave, you know, when it, when it goes around. And then she's... She's really uh, like showing that that if we all have our white candle, if we all light the candle, and then there's a candle of the hope, it goes around. And when it comes back to us, it means that's my next day. So there is this continuity. This is what she was explaining here. <clears throat> um, uh, 
Uh, I really fa found her, the, the way how she's explaining things very, very, in a very detailed manner, you know, very, very um, uh, comprehensive in that way, you know. Now, there was quite like, something quite interesting here because she's saying that in this time we currently live now, everybody has this responsibility to help each other and look out for each other because she says we know what has happened or what happened when people were selfish. So there are some 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 punch some 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 thoughts I think we can all take on and we can think about how we keep the light in our heart and then how we are looking after each other because everybody has that responsibility. And then she again continued talking about how much she wants to educate. Um, and then she says, you know, there are those people who have less awareness, and then this whole. Uh, what we are experiencing, this is a new experience for them. And then she says that just allow yourself to settle and don't make yourself wrong if you don't understand or you don't feel the frequency of something coming to you. And then she's saying just allow yourself to settle into what you understand. And then you can ask questions and you then just make sure that with your question, you, sim you simplify your things. And, and most importantly, you are not panicking. And then she went on to, she goes on to what to do when we feel, when you feel that you are panicking. And it can happen to anybody. You don't find something or you miss a call or you miss something. So, you know, we might be panicking a little bit. And then she says, you know, at the time when you panic, you just remember you go back to your heart and feel the light of hope in your heart. And then a little bit later, she says, you know, I made it very easy for you. It's very simple. It's just two steps. You know, you need to take two steps. One of them is that you come to your heart you feel the light of hope, you immediately link it up, you raise your frequency, and then you go to the highest to the highest, the consciousness. And then she said, uh, our problem with humanity is that we tend to think because we think our question and we want to understand the, the answer. So we are thinking, but she says it's much, much more, much more uh, easy. It's, it's much easier uh, when we bring everything into our heart and then we are waiting and expecting or allowing the, the answer to come into our heart. And then later on in this conversation, it was quite interesting because she said, you know, I, I, I studied biology. And then she said, I, I did not really enjoy everything, but I learned what I needed to learn. And for instance, I know what the heart does. So biologically, she was talking about the heart. And she said, Currently, not many people know really what is happening with our heart or why we, have, why we have a heart or what the real purpose or the frequency of the heart. And she says, if I had known all the information and knowledge, what, what I can give you now, uh, or if, if it was available or it is available for everybody in the shop, everybody would be just running to the shop and buy that information. She's, she's, so, so she's making it very, very easy for us because she's, she was talking in this conversation that how the heart has different layers and different dimensions. And as she said, then we are raising the frequency in our heart and we are moving, we are linking up to the higher consciousness, the highest of the highest consciousness. We are already in that increased frequency and different dimensions of the actual bi biological heart. And then when we receive the, the, the answer, what we need to receive, it is coming to those, those different layers, multidimensional layers, in our heart and this is how we are building it into ourselves and then she said it is much easier to do and to live our lives in this way as opposed to thinking and wanting to understand uh, the conversation and then the situation and then she was saying that you can have a question at any time in your life for instance when you are feeding the, your baby that was her example and she said i'm not saying that you drop your baby because you are holding your baby but while you are while you are feeding your child you immediately bring yourself back to your heart, raise your frequency, go to the highest of the highest consciousness. And while you are you are receiving the what you need to receive, you are receiving it, and then your child is receiving at the same time that frequency. So she said that you know I'm making it very very easy for you because there are only two steps. You know, so it's um, uh, it's, it's quite fascinating to 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 um, imagine you know all the different things. It's, it feels that. That, that there are so many, many different areas of, of our lives. She would like to add a little note here and there. Uh, now, she is talking about, let me see, because I think it's quite interesting, her relationship with her father. Yeah? 
Let me see. I think I have a minute or two. So I will tell you this and then the rest of the information probably next time because I, I, I just don't want to leave, uh, leave this one behind. Now, she's talking about a relationship with her father and that her father is there. So she was bringing her father. She's making me aware that her father is watching over her in great O, that this is what that uh, this is what her, uh, his daughter has achieved. And there is that sensation that her father, Otto Frank, is not coming forward to speak, but I see him sitting behind and just watching as his daughter is on stage. Now, when they on stage, that, that has actually a conversation here, because he says, the father says, that she does not need her, the daughter, Anna does not need her, because this is what she always wanted to do. She always wanted to teach, and finally she's doing she's doing it. And even though she doesn't know whom she's teaching or whom she's talking to, but then he's very pleased that she is on stage. He is, Otto Frank, is saying that I always knew that this is what my daughter can do, even if I said it otherwise or expressed, it was because I just had to say it to protect my daughter. But then deep down, I always knew that she was very, very special and that she would continue doing and creating great conversations. And when I say conversations, this sensation is like a cob, like a cob web, cob of conversations. So this is what, what um, uh, the father gave us. He's saying that from his perspective, he's going to have her if she asks her, but he knows that she will not ask her or she would ask only her when she really, really needs that help or needs the input, needs that input. Um, but he says that he has, she has grown so much. And just one more little thought that he is letting know the father that since Anna Frank has passed, she has not wasted one day or one moment for not preparing for what she is stepping into and that the role is stepping into and bringing forward. Because in that very place, in that very moment, she knew uh, at that time of her passing, she knew that she had this understanding that knowing her soul has chosen this experience and um, on this earth plane. And then from that experience, she's going to be able to teach us. Uh, now, continuing talking about crossroads and different things, but I'll tell you what, at this point, this is just half of the conversation. And I would be just so very delighted to bring it back to you next time and share further information. If you are interested in the work, what I do, find me on my webpage, susannamedium.com, or my Facebook page, Susanna Medium. And Susanna is always spelled with nine letters, Z-S-U, Z-S-A, N-N-A. And I really, really hope you enjoyed this conversation. And i just like to say a huge thank you to Spirit and her, her frequency to come forward and also even our secretary and Musak TV for creating this opportunity. And I'm sending you much love and many, many blessings. See you next time. Thank you.